Dr. Lisa Schaefer is the Vice Chancellor of Enrollment at the Ivy Tech Northwest and North Central Regions, and she's here to talk to us today about the enrollment process. So that's the first question. Tell us about the enrollment process. Well, Ivy Tech makes the enrollment process initially very easy because the application is free, and it's not very long, it's short. You can find it at ivytech.edu. And the process of applying then is just the fact of getting on our website and actually filling out an application that's maybe about three pages long online and then it goes directly to our, our processing center. After that, the process involves a student taking possibly uh, meeting with a, a admissions rep, uh, taking a placement test, going through the financial aid application, and of course a meeting with an advisor to discuss and assess career interests. But the process, because we're an open access institution, is actually pretty easy at the front, at the front part of um, the experience for the student. Each campus has a lot of, has um, express enrollment centers so that, uh, in, especially in the South Bank campus, that a student can walk right in and be almost full service from the application process through financial aid and, and then um, segued into the advising process. So we try to make ourselves very student focused, um, community focused in terms of making sure that the access that student has isn't prohibited by any service issues that we that or barriers that we that are put in front of them. We want to make sure that students see and feel the access and the barrier free um, service opportunities that a community college should provide. Student focused, I love that. What do you think though are the biggest hurdles for potential students to overcome when they're attempting to, to enroll? I think that when you look at our, the uh, populations that we serve, you have the high school population that's coming right in. So they're kind of fresh, they've been in the educational environment, um, they come in, a lot of times for them, their GPA can serve as uh, an admissions prereq and they don't have to take the placement exam. For our adult students, I think one of the hurdles that comes in front of them sometimes is the fact that one of the things they might have to do is take a placement test. And so we have a program called Ivy Prep, so we try to help students, and it's free to students, to kind of prep them for the placement test itself so that they can refresh their memory on some math skills that they might be rusty on or English skills that they might be rusty on to try to remove some barriers again and be more focused on their success as they try to you know, jump that first hurdle of starting their educational journey here at um, Ivy Tech Community College. So I would say definitely for adult students, there is a, the uh, testing barrier. For all students, with 65% of our students at Ivy Tech receiving Pell Grants or first generation, uh, paying for college is a big barrier. So the FAFSA form itself is very, and that's the free application for federal student aid, is a complicated form. So we have, again, in our express enrollment and at any of our one-stop shops, as we call them, there's staff there to support students in applying for financial aid because that is probably one of the more complex parts of trying to pay for college is to kind of make it through that particular form and process. And the financial aid process actually recently changed, is that correct with FAFSA? That is correct. And they tried, and I think they have made it a little easier, even though it might be a little bit more complex for uh, those of us who have to process, but they're allowing students to use their prior term tax returns. So in the past, you would have had to wait until your tax returns or you would have done an estimated tax return for 2015, or excuse me, 2016. Now you can use your 2015 taxes to apply for financial aid. So you're using something that's already there. The, the philosophy, is, it's my understanding, is that people's incomes don't change that dramatically from year to year. So they're trying, they are trying to take steps, the federal government, to make it a little easier for students and to apply earlier for financial aid. That's another thing that allows students to do is they have the opportunity to apply earlier for financial aid. Indiana, the statewide, and this, had, it, it, this was all colleges and community colleges, Ivy Tech included, had um, uh, uh, a day for students to file financial aid where all the universities get together in this area. We all went over to IUSB to support students in the financial aid application process earlier. Usually it's done in February because March 1st is the filing deadline, but with the uh, uh, amendment that the uh, federal government made, students now get to apply earlier for financial aid, which means they'll have earlier estimated uh, aid award sent to them, which gives them a better idea of what their cost of education is going to be. Let's go back to what you were talking about when non-traditional uh, students are coming to college and then they have to take that test. Well, what happens if they don't pass that test? Well, there's really no such thing as not passing. 
especially for uh, a community college system, we're here to provide access to all students. So there's all there's different ways that we can ease students into a math class. Um, we have co-rec classes where the student might be taking a, a college level math class with some sub, um, uh, uh, tutoring associated with it to help the student succeed in the math class. Same thing with the English classes. So we try to find a way to support students where they are in the educational process to be successful as they try to launch what, like I said, is going to be an educational journey for them. And we want to make sure that we're supportive at every step of the way because, again, the role of a community college is to provide access to education. You've had a wide range of experiences working with students throughout your life, which I think is amazing. Do, have you seen a difference between performance for those students who come right out of high school versus non-traditional students? I would have to say no. I would say that a lot of it has to do with un the student understanding what the expectations are. So um, here at Ivy Tech Community College, they can be a transfer student or they can be uh, a student going right into a career field. I mean, but most of our, almost every single one of our programs can be either or, you know, with a couple of exceptions. So it has to do with the student being prepared to understand what the, and for us or any educational institution, being able to explain to students what the expectations are. Any kind of uh, educational environment, especially when you have a lot of first generation students, you need to make sure that you're supporting student success. Because a lot of times, since you're first generation, your families don't understand what the educational, what, what, what you're doing, what your educational journey looks like because they've never been to college. So it's really incumbent upon our advising staff, the staff that we have at our one stops to really support students and as I was telling you about the South Bend campus that we just opened uh, some wraparound services that help students that might have uh, food needs or other types of needs that they might have that aren't being met in their everyday life. So we want to make sure that we're giving students community resources, the resources here to be successful and to understand what the expectations are because any way you slice it, there's still the student has to have buy-in because it's an educational journey that they're on. We're here just to support them in their success. And what part does high, do high school counselors play in this too? Because of course, I'm sure that a lot of the high school students are utilizing those counselors in, in, when they're in high school. So Absolutely. what role do they play? High school counselors are one of the most critical elements in student success. And I mean not student success, say that someone comes out right out of high school or they start maybe two years after they decided to work or whatever the case may be. You know, from the get-go, we have over 6,000 students across uh, South Bend and Elkhart taking dual credit with Ivy Tech Community College. So high school counselors are talking to students from the get-go in their educational experience because Ivy Tech's become their first choice college because they're, they already have a transcript from us. So high school counselors are working with them to help them better understand the dual credit they're taking and how it will lend to transferring to Ivy Tech for an associate's degree or another college or university that they might be interested in. Uh, they're critical in the college choice process. This is the first, high school counselors are helping young people make the first adult choice of their life about where they're going to go to college. So um, the staff that we have, staff other colleges have, are there to help educate the high school counselors about the different value that a place like Ivy Tech brings, you know, to the choice matrix that a student has when they're trying to pick what college, what career is going to be best for them. The process. I mean, we're there to support high school counselors in um, the, the college process. So we have financial aid nights. A lot of universities and colleges support all the high schools in this area with financial aid night, parent nights. We have uh, what we call Go Ivy Day, so where we invite parents and students to campus to kind of explore the different career opportunities and uh, educational opportunities that Ivy Tech has to offer. We're there to support the high school counselors in helping the students understand the process a little better. And I try to reinforce with the uh, admissions reps that go out that the message is, especially for a community college that supports the community through the educational life of a student, that we're here for you now. We're here for you if you change your mind about what your degree path is going to be. And we're here for you later when you might have to do a career change. So community colleges play a critical role in helping the community stabilize employment and, um, and growth. And, and, and so the community college is here for the life cycle of a student. What about for students who say, college isn't for me, that's not the path for me, it's too expensive, I can't afford it. How do you respond to that? 
Well, Ivy Tech is fortunate to say that we are one of the most affordable options in the state of Indiana. Um, we're uh, return on investment conscious, we're price conscious. At $3,500 for tuition with 65% of our students Pell eligible, Ivy Tech's one of the most, and most community colleges are the most affordable options a student could choose in terms of looking at educational opportunities through an affordability lens. But through a, a realistic lens, many, many program or many, many career paths really are like welding. You know, welding's one of the, and advanced manufacturing, nanotechnology. These are areas where students really just need like a certificate or an associate's degree to actually get a great paying future and a career in a, in a solid industry. And there's always lifelong learning, so there's nothing that's gonna stop because technology, as we all know, changes, you know, you know, we could blink our eyes and there's something new that's come out. So lifelong learning is critical for any of these students to understand. I used to do, and this is a long time ago in Indiana, the more you know, the farther you will go. And there's all kinds of statistics that tell you and show you that any education post high school is gonna have value to, to the uh, student. So it's important that students think about their careers, they think about the, that it is lifelong learning and that particularly a place like Ivy Tech is gonna help you switch careers in midstream. I mean, and you see that a lot of times when plants close or something like that, somebody has to think about a new career and community colleges certainly are here to support that type of growth and opportunity for our, um, the communities we serve. Love that. How do you match students with the right career path? The advising staff that we have, and we have a career staff too, there's a career exploration tool that they use to really help students understand their strengths and the different options and opportunities across the spectrum of health sciences. I mean, some of the most, the, the, the careers that are growing the most right now are in the health fields. So respiratory care is really big on our Elkhart campus. Of course, nursing is something that there's more demand than there is space almost across the United States. Um, technology, again, high demands in advanced manufacturing, um, nanotechnology, and then, you know, even from things like early childhood education. Um, that's another area where we see a lot of strength and solid business management and uh, computer informatics, another space where you constantly need education. So we're here to, and I'm going to have to fold on the question. I forgot what the question no was. No worries. No, no, I was just asking about how do you know, how do you match students up with the right career path? Because oftentimes they get it, right. unfortunately, they kind of have like a midlife crisis and they're thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. So how do you make sure that that's really authentic to them? Yeah, there's, like I said, the software that we use helps students understand um, what careers meet their strengths and their interests. So there's an interest inventory. I think many of us have taken those in our lifetime to make sure that we're on the right track with things. But it's the same type of thing that we use with students. And of course, you know, the relationship that you have with faculty members, especially when things are more um, real life oriented, that you get students out in the field, they talk to people. Um, many of our adjunct faculty members work in the field themselves. So by having a large faculty, uh, 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 staff that is actually a large group of faculty that are actually in the field helps students understand if the, you know if the reality that they're seeing is the reality that they want for a career. Experiential learning that, yep. that is something you guys have always emphasized. Here. Absolutely. Let's compare Ivy Tech to a traditional four-year institution. Talk about the pros and cons. You mentioned some, but let's elaborate a little bit more. The value again in terms of Ivy Tech is the two paths. I mean, students can come and transfer. We have um, a general education certificate, so there's a one-year program that you can get, and all of those courses should transfer to one of our state colleges or universities. There's also uh, uh, associate's degrees that students can get that are specific and transfer in, um, they've been agreed upon with the IUs and the Purdue's around the state to make sure that when students are on the transfer path that we're partnered closely with our peers around the uh, state so that the students have a seamless uh, entry into the four-year program. Um, in terms of how we, career and technical, anyone who will get a career technical uh, degree, even those degrees have uh, avenues to carry on to a four-year degree. So someone pre-engineering, they could stop with pre-engineering at associate's degree, but if then they're in the right program, like the Associates of Arts or Sciences, that degree itself would transfer to a Purdue or an IU, and they could carry on after maybe they worked a couple years and they were like, oh, now that I've done this for a while, I think I wanna pursue this a little bit further. So it's very important 
at Ivy Tech and with the state of Indiana that we make sure that if students are interested in transfer, that that transfer can be as seamless as possible. So that is uh, critical to us, is making sure that we're partnering with the Bethel College. We, are, we have a program with Bethel College where some of the students do come here for a couple years and then they transfer over to Bethel and that's pretty common. There's an ABC program with IU South Bend so that we can work with students through the community college system and then it's a seamless process over to um, IU South Bend. Are you guys seeing a decline in attendance or is your enrollment up? Community colleges, whenever the economy is uh, flush with opportunities, uh, tend to lose a little of their enrollment. So we're in one of those spaces where we're losing a little enrollment overall, but you still see the strengths in transfer, liberal arts, and general education. You still see the strengths in health, the healthcare division where dental hygiene, nursing, uh, medical technology, respiratory therapy, all of those are high demand fields where we're seeing you know, that we're maintaining our strengths. Same thing in the technology fields. Even in business administration, the accounting field is an area that's even grown a little bit over time because students are seeing, again, there's another field where maybe you get a two-year degree and then you, after two, you go and work for a year or two, you're like, oh, I think I want to pursue a bachelor's degree yeah. now that I've been doing accounting for a couple years at a certain level. So we've lost a little of enrollment, but we feel positive about uh, the places where we're seeing growth. Great. Let's, lastly, let's talk about our, if there's a need for two-year degrees, which th I think you would say that there are, and um, is it easier to tackle a two-year degree than a four-year program, in your opinion? What they've found, a lot of the national statistics have said that students who complete a two-year associate's degree and then go on to a four-year degree are more likely to complete their four-year degree. So, I mean, if you look at the statistics, you take, and like any of us, sometimes when we have big goals, if we break them down to little goals, that really helps us complete them. So I think that there's a role there in terms of how uh, community colleges and Ivy Tech support students, especially adult students who aren't sure it's in if they're first generation about what education looks like to them to kind of help them through a certificate program and then an associate's degree. And then, you know, with the strength and partnerships we have with IU South Bend, Bethel College, and other colleges around here um, to support students to take that next rung on the ladder and get a bachelor's degree. So it's a step process, and I think it's a partnership all the way through to what the students' goals are. And if you can step them through and help them see that they're small goals, that's the best way to help someone. Let's talk also about two-year degrees and then ongoing training that's sometimes required once they're in the job. Ivy Tech is very focused and in tune with the business community to make sure that we're keeping up to date with a lot of um, training and retraining needs in the, uh, for the state and for the communities that we serve. So like any of the technologies, uh, computer programming would be a perfect place where as soon as one language you think you've learned one, another one's come up and that's the language that you have to program, be it websites or whatever the case may be. So it's good for us to be in tune with the demands of the uh, industries that we serve here in these communities to make sure that students are getting the retraining that they need and we're giving them and that we can be nimble enough with some of our curriculum to make sure that we're supporting what the community needs in terms of training. And we have a corporate college uh, area where we do work more specifically in a non-credit hour space sometimes to help businesses, even in a more nimble way, achieve their training needs. And if for those who are interested in learning more maybe about the college admission process or they want to come back after kind of a career crisis, where can they go? You said your website, that's the place to go and they can just explore more on your website then? Absolutely. The, the website, ivytech.edu, is a great resource for people to explore all the different options across all the Ivy Techs across the state. South Bend has a wide complement of uh, programs. I think we have over 90 programs just here at the Ivy Tech campus here in uh, South Bend. So, I mean, there's tons of opportunity for students to explore um, anywhere from welding to accounting to dental hygiene. So the, the vast array of opportunities here at this community college is pretty broad and definitely a service to South Bend Elkhart. Great, what else would you like to add? Is there anything else? You know, education is one of the most important and fundamental things for us to be a stronger economy, for us to have a stronger society. So I think it's important for parents and, and, and students and high school counselors and um, 
people like all of us, myself included, to make sure that we're talking to people, whoever we meet on the street, about the opportunities there are through education. I think that education is what's going to drive us forward and make us a stronger, you know, a stronger community, a stronger state. So no matter your background, no matter what challenges you have yep. faced, education can unlock a lot of your potential. Absolutely, and community college, Ivy Tech Community College is committed to helping and serving students and we're, and by, by design we're student focused. Small classes, affordable, um, looking strongly at the community's employment needs and our programs. So there's a close tie with return on investment for the students who are here. And not to mention you guys are also serving a diverse population, so it's not just a bunch of wealthy kids coming right. for, for these certificates or degrees. Everyone's represented. Everyone's represented. It's, it's a slice of real life. Um, the nice thing that I've always found in environments like Ivy Tech Community College is that you can get the idealistic 18-year-old and you also get the realistic 35-year-old. And you know that adds a lot of positive dynamic in the classroom because as a 35-year-old uh, realist, you don't want to give away too many of your ideals. <laughs> And as an 18-year-old idealist, you need to understand a little bit of what the realities are out there. So I think it's a great combination um, when you think about the classroom environment, too, for students, because it's rich with real-life experiences. And as you said, experiential learning becomes a cornerstone of what makes uh, our uh, career in technology and um, uh, programs successful. Great.